Coach so Jim Makovsky at Rummy Macius' 100th birthday party. You are one of three coaches. Yes, sir. When you came into this job, this guy was obviously uh, had his fingerprints not only on the program but the entire state. Uh, what's it like to you know kind of carry on the tradition of what he's brought, not just to, to the state of Minnesota but Mankato specifically? It's an honor. Uh, I think it's J. Rob that talks about the keeper of the flame. And uh, Rummy started it in 1950, uh, built it up, built up the high school wrestling, not only in Minnesota, but I think around the Midwest and maybe even further. And um, he was here 38 years. I got here. I knew about him. It's been, it's been really cool getting to know him. And uh, you know Rummy, he doesn't have a shortage of stories. He gets uh, two-thirds of the way through, and then he starts another one. And uh, I've learned a lot from him, and uh, it's pretty cool to sit in the chair that he sat in you know, for 38 years. One thing you have to do at a program like this is know the tradition. You look around the room, there are guys that won national titles in the 50s that are in here remembering their coach from when they were kids. And we're, we're talking people that are in their 70s and 80s now. And uh, how do you kind of respect that history and how do you cultivate that history and that alumni base with the program here in Mankato? Well, first of all, I feel a tremendous amount of responsibility to keep it going. Um, you know, we're all we're all going to be you know come and go, and it's our job while we're here to keep it going. And over the years, meeting all these guys, um, there's very few faces here that I don't recognize or I haven't talked to. And when I got here in '93. I heard about the tradition and all that stuff, and, and like the work that you do to like research it. Um, they had to go through a lot of stuff, and that was pre-internet to get to get all those All-Americans and national champs up on the wall. But I would say with Rummy, um, it's not just the guys that are on the wall. He's had a huge impact on every guy that's gone through the program, and that's kind of the, that's part of the deal. We can all recognize the names, you know, the guys that had a lot of success on the map, but the lessons he taught about being hungry, humble, and smart, um, persistence, I think that's why you see the turnout you see here today, because uh, I'm guessing there was some tough love in there. When you look at the sport of wrestling, there are people that they talk about greats, they talk about Hall of Fame coaches, and it's uh, not always the credentials, even though he's got plenty of credentials as a championship coach the impact one has. You can look at the kids that he coached and then their kids, and in this case their grandkids or even sometimes their great grandkids. What has his impact really been on the sport of wrestling? I think it's huge. You know, I wasn't around in the 50s. Um, you know, I was just a baby in the 60s, but I hear stories from coaches all over the place. Like he was really one of the first guys that broke down technique. He's kind of an in innovator. And, um, and I've, you know, he wrote a couple books. A lot of people come up to me and said that they had used their book for wrestling theory class when they were in college. Um, and then just the number of coaches he produced. You know, a lot of those coaches were, they coached for 25, 30 years. Uh, in the state of Minnesota, a lot of them were the best, the best coaches in the state and really got the state of Minnesota to be on, on the national scene, to be one of the best states with wrestling. If you could try to encapsulate the person that is Rummy Macius in just a short story, what do you think it would be? If you had 90 seconds to explain 100 years of this guy, how would you do it? First of all, I just think he's a cool dude. He's, uh, if you look at old pictures, he's got a little, he's got style, uh, pretty short shorts in every picture. He's got, has a heck of a head of hair, you know, kind of like the Elvis. Uh, Elvis kind of hair. And I, I just think he's a cool person. And, you know, I think uh, from what I heard, he just gave up golf like three weeks ago. And normally in the summer, him and his son David on uh, Tuesdays or Thursdays at 9, they're always out there. And to think that you can actually live to 100 is incredible. But he's still active. And he's still golfing and uh Telling stories, you, you've talked to him, he's, he's got plenty, but he's got, I just think he's a cool dude, and he's got a really good vibe, and uh, 
I'm, I, he's very consistent. I've never seen him down or up. He's just pretty even keel.